Last month, I uploaded a video on five Walmart bikes that I refused to buy. And I received quite a few requests after that video on making another video for five bikes that I recommend. Well, I don't recommend bikes. I can only share my opinions and my experiences with what I have. And that's what this video is about. The five best Walmart bikes that I've purchased thus far. Though I do know a bit about Walmart's bike offerings. So I can say that as of early 2019, looking at their lineup, that I still think that these are the best. Let's dig in, but before we do, let me note that these are all bikes sold by Walmart. Whether that be in store or on Walmart.com, I don't count bikes by marketplace sellers. Also, I'm going to be ranking these from 5 to 1, with 1 being the best. So let's kick off at number 5, with the Hyper Carbon X, an actual carbon fiber mountain bike sold at Walmart. In its factory form, there's a lot standard about the Carbon X, meaning that it has some $200 Walmart bike components. There's the standard cheap fork, and they're dual disc brakes, but they're JAK super brakes. And they're also trigger shifters, but then there's some somewhat brand name components. You get a Torney rear derailleur, then there's the Snafu saddle, and also a Neko stem, and there's also a Neko bottom bracket. Doesn't sound all that impressive, right? Well, it actually is, because this bike has one claim to fame, and that's its carbon fiber frame. That frame is actual carbon fiber and it's very light and apparently somewhat durable because this was my most ridden bike all of last year. And considering the price, I only paid $3.99. Now it has went up just a bit, but I think this is probably where it hits the mark for me because I bought this bike for that frame and with the intention of upgrading it. And that's how Project X, as it's became known, was born. And I think it went well. It actually exceeded my expectations, and that's for a Walmart bike, so that's a big deal. Though it's not number one, it's number five for a reason. And that's because of the cost involved in the overall project. Coming in at number four is the Huffy Cranbrook, though this is really any of the similar Walmart cruiser style bikes. It's because all the cruisers have classic good looks and a variety of colors and styles, but it's the bare bones simplicity and lots of steel, at least by modern standards, that make them the tanks of the big box world and get them a spot on this list. For me, it was a red one that ticked all the boxes, and this is a project bike that I just haven't gotten to yet. And aside from the simplicity that makes them reliable, they're also cheap at under $100, and regularly, there's usually a style that's going to be on sale for $79 to $89, like this one. Looks like today's sale is an $89 silver model, and this silver looks even more vintage. There are even comparably priced cruisers for people that can't do single speed, because maybe you have hills you need to pedal up. How about a Margaritaville cruiser with seven speeds for getting up inclines? So basically the same simplicity, but with a few more gears and still under $100. Or maybe the Parrot Head Life isn't your thing. Don't worry, there's the Kent Bayside. Same pricing, same seven speeds, same classic cruiser styling. And a cruiser may get even cheaper. I was looking around my local Walmart and I found a black and red Kent Bayside. Still has the seven speeds, but this one was on clearance for $59. Definitely worth a spot on the list. Number three is the Mongoose XR Pro. Now, this is one of those bikes that people either seem to love or love to hate. And two years ago, when I discovered the XR Pro, I thought it may be the first full suspension bike at Walmart that could potentially survive on a trail. It tends to vary in price somewhat, usually around $350, currently at $399, though I have seen it on sale for as low as $299. I do need to note that two years ago, this bike was a really big deal and would have probably been number one on my list back then. I mean, I had a threadless headset, trigger shifters, you just didn't see that stuff back then. But now, they're kind of common. But two years later, it's still a good bike, and that's because this is very upgradable, and it was the upgrade community that caught my attention and arguably transformed this channel into what it is today. And it was my first project with this bike, Project XR, that taught me that a Walmart bike can take a beating in the right situation and with the right components. And this bike endures today as a loner bike. Now for number two, I'm probably going to stir some disagreement, but stick with me, because in this spot I've put the Roadmaster Granite Peak. Yeah, the Roadmaster Granite Peak. There's no standout feature on the Granite Peak, and aside from a cruiser, it's about as non-flashy as you're going to get. But it's the market this appeals to, and how it perfectly matches the needs of said market that earns it such a high spot on my list. This bike is always under $100, and frequently $79 or below. And if you get a good one and it's assembled properly, it can be a great water tester bike or a great gift bike to get someone back into cycling. 
because most people don't want to throw a lot of money at what is in essence a big question mark and that makes this a big deal. And to my avid viewers, yes, this is the same granite peak that I bought two years ago that had bad welds, so bad I wouldn't even ride it but that was one bike, and I've looked at every granite peak I've seen since then and haven't seen any more welds like that. And an added bonus is there's a women's granite peak that's usually cheaper. Multiple times I've seen them for $59. And they may say women's, but there are quite a few men around here that ride them. They like the step-through design. And to me, the women's granite peak, it just looks better for some reason. Like, it has more class. Even the welds look better. It's like it's an overall better bike for less money. I even bought my sister one for Christmas, and she's been riding it since. Totally bad into cycling. At my local Walmart, look at this, $59. So $59 to $99 investment, that's why this sells so well and gets people back into cycling and that's why it's number two. Before I get to number one, I'm going to throw in a few would-have bikes. These are bikes that would have been on this list but aren't for various reasons. Like the Schwinn Cutback. It was only $99 and it had a one-by drivetrain, a threadless headset, a tourney rear derailleur, even cheap trigger shifters. The styling, I'll admit, it wasn't for everyone and possibly why it's no longer available. But to me, this was a benchmark for how a $100 bike should be equipped. I used some spare parts I had laying around and turned mine into a decent urban bike. Walmart, you should bring back the cutback. There was also, once upon a time, the Redline Xander, sized frames and all. Yeah, sized frames from Walmart. And this was a product that was too good to be true, but actually existed. And from what I understand, it was Excel North America that made these. They're the owners of Diamondback and Raleigh and a few others. And they made a special run of bikes for Walmart using overstock Diamondback Overdrive ST parts. That's a $500 bike. The Redline Xander never sold for over $300. And for some reason, it took six months at under $200 before they sold out, and then everyone wanted one. It wasn't until I started making videos on it that it rapidly sold out, so maybe people just didn't know it was available. Also in the honorable mention category is the Schwinn Aluminum Comp. This will be coming to Kev Central in March, and this is the new standard for features under $200, and this bumped the Schwinn boundary off the list, so stay tuned for the review. You've already seen four of the top five, from the Carbon X to the Roadmaster Granite Pika. It almost sounds wrong saying those in the same sentence together, but it's true. And now it's time for my number one bike, the best Walmart bike that I've purchased, and that's the Hyper Hydroform. In my opinion, this is the new king of the big box hill, and that's based on value versus feature versus performance. Recently, the Hydroform comes and goes out of stock pretty regularly. I don't know if my video had anything to do with that, but if it did, I'm kind of impressed. Impressed is a good segue word, because I feel for $199, there's a lot of bike in the Hydroform. And there are no outstanding components, but it is a nice looking bike, and people that are shopping at Walmart for a bike are generally attracted to the full suspension bikes. So you get the full suspension look, but you also get an anodized looking frame, 29 inch wheels, trigger shifters, and even some components that are branded like the Snafu Saddle. And unlike most other full suspension big box bikes, this rear shock isn't like riding around on a pogo stick. And that's not to say it's a usable mountain bike for trails off the shelf, because it's really not. I mean, it's still a $200 Walmart bike, but it, much like the Schwinn Aluminum Comp, are kind of setting that standard for what you should see at this price point. And much like the Mongoose XR Pro, I was attracted to the Hydroform to see what I could make out of it. And two revisions and three months later, I'm pleased with what I call Project Hydro. And there's a Stage 3 from Project Hydro coming in April for fans of that series. But for me, this is a nice build that fits my budget. And all that comes together to make this number one and the new king of the big box bike hill. Before I wrap up, I want to say that I have fun making these videos and sharing them with you, and I'm thrilled that so many of you enjoy the videos and are active in the comments section. So now I want to ask you, what do you think about my top five list? Did I pick the right bikes, or should I put others here? Comment below and let me know. I also want to take a moment to give a random shout out to one of my Patreon patrons. I appreciate all my patrons. Your extra support helps me make this channel even better, so thank you. But today, the special shout out goes to Spectrum. Thanks so much for your support and helping this channel grow. And Spectrum, you should also have your Kev Central sticker by now. I hope you're enjoying it. So thanks again. To everyone else, if you want to become a patron, you can get additional content and a chance at a random shout out just like Spectrum's today. Click the link in the description for more. And to everyone, I want to say thank you for watching my videos and have a great day.